In this installation video, I'm going to be installing the Troy Industries 13 inch Alpha Battle Rail with flip up front sight. I'm going to be installing it on a uh, upper receiver off of one of my rifles, um, which is what we're looking at right now. Uh, this is a 14 and a half inch barrel with a vortex flash hider permanently. Uh, attached to the barrel, a Spikes Tactical adjustable gas block, uh, and a Spikes Tactical uh, upper receiver, and this is a carbine length gas system. I previously had a free floating barrel on this rifle and I just took it off. If you don't have a low profile gas block on your rifle, if you have the standard F marked front sight base gas block and uh, delta ring attached to your barrel nut. You would need to to either cut down your front sight base, um, you know, which would uh, sticks up a little bit. You can cut it down with a, uh, with a cutter and a Dremel and shape it so it will fit underneath your free floating handguard, or what I recommend of course remove it completely and get a low profile gas block for your barrel and uh, for the delta ring the delta ring assembly uh, some people cut those off without touching their barrel nut I recommend remove the entire assembly and remove the uh, delta ring um, you would need some specialized split ring pliers to remove that. But uh, again, if if you uh, don't have those tools and the expertise to install a, a, a low profile gas block or you know remove your barrel nut and so on, uh, do a search on YouTube uh, for installation of free float free floating uh, handguards. There's numerous people that have cut down their their uh, uh, front sight gas block and just cut off their delta ring so that's all I'm going to say on that topic so um, I'm ready to install so um, I'm gonna, going to do a parts check um, we will definitely need some thread locker um, this is a blue thread locker um, you Loctite is a specific brand of thread locker this is a generic brand I do not recommend anything uh, above blue for example red is a no-no because red is a permanent thread locker uh, you don't want to use that so blue is your best choice uh, for a thread locker in my opinion we're gonna need this for our uh, Allen bolts uh, that go on to the tabs, uh, which actually attach the free floating rail or free floating free, uh, free floating handguard to our barrel nut. So you want to double check and make sure that you've got some thread locker, and then um, taking the parts out of your uh, Troy Industries. Uh, battle rail um, this is uh, one small ziplock bag and it has uh, three of these allen bolts these are the bolts I'm specifically talking about that we're going to need thread locker on um, and these are the tabs that actually uh, hold the battle rail onto your barrel nut and inside of that bag will be I believe it's a 5 8 inch hex key, allen wrench, whatever you want to call it. I'm sorry, it's a 532nd. And that should all be in one of the bags. So we're going to apply a thread locker to these. And if you're going to install rails, um, the Troy Battle Rail comes with uh, a four inch rail section and two two inch rail sections. In my particular case I'm going to install two 
the two two inch rail sections I don't need the four inch and in our last parts bag uh, these are the backing plates for the rails there'll be three backing plates there'll be two short ones and one long one the long one being for the four inch rail I'm going to use the two two inch backing plates also in this bag is uh, another hex key or allen wrench uh, it is a smaller one I'm going to need that and I'm going to need four of the bolts that are inside of the bag there's actually six in there so if you don't use all the rails you're going to have some parts left over so these are a smaller bolt with a smaller uh, allen head on them and we're going to need four of those these are also bolts that we're going to put our blue loctite on Okay, so uh, the remainder of the parts and the four inch rail and so on, I'm going to set aside. Um, I like to keep a lot of these extra parts. I keep them inside the original box and I keep the box uh, in a drawer uh, in the event I ever decide to upgrade and I want to sell the old one. Uh, I've got the original box, packing material and all, this, all the parts. Okay, um, the Troy Alpha Battle Rail, this is the nice uh, retail box it comes in, I'm not going to talk about that a whole lot, um, it's packaged very well with uh, foam on the ends uh, that uh, create kind of a suspension system to keep the uh, rail suspended inside of the box. And there's our battle rail. I'm going to set this out of the way for just a moment. The alpha rail ships with these instructions. And the instructions talk about safe handling of the firearm. Make sure it's not loaded. Um, step number one talks about the delta ring and the front side assembly being removed and a low profile gas block has to be installed. Um, step two, loosen the three screws by two full turns with the 532nd Allen wrench. And step three, slide the rail onto the barrel nut while rotating rail five degrees clockwise until flush with receiver, then rotate back to align rail with upper receiver. Step four, Holding rail into position, tighten the three retaining clamp screws evenly. For best results, use thread locking compound. So even Troy recommends using a thread locking compound. For rails with built-in sight, to raise the sight, press the button. To fold sight, press button and push down until it locks into position. Um, the last step says if screw comes out of clamp make sure a tapered end is facing end of rail and nut lip in groove of rail so if you read these instructions it almost sounds like these um, bolts and the clamps come pre-installed and that's definitely not the case um, you you have to make sure that the clamps are, inst are installed uh, in the right orientation and we'll, we'll cover that. So these instructions are fairly good. They could, definitely could be better. Um, so um, the next step here is uh, I highly recommend if you're going to install your rail sections do it now before you install uh, the battle rail. Uh, it's very frustrating to try and install these rails, your rail sections on the battle rail with the battle rail installed on your upper receiver. And that's because you have a backing plate that you need to get positioned just right 
and it needs to be held down and you need to get the screws started and so on so you, you almost have to have your fingers inside of the rail the battle rail holding down the backing plates okay so with that said um, I've already kind of played around with um, where I want to put uh, my rails um, I'm going to put uh, a rail right about here um, um, actually I'm gonna put it right about here I'm gonna put it all the way forward that's for my flashlight and then I'm gonna put a two inch rail on the bottom for uh, a Bravo company um, vertical grip So this is more or less where it's going to go and uh, these rail sections are specific to the alpha rail um, and in the fact that they have these raised uh, round sections here that are designed to fit into these openings so you can't just grab any old picatinny rail and and put on here and have it fit correctly um, you if you need more rail sections you can definitely buy them from Troy Industries and and I would recommend that you do that instead of trying to use a rail that's not designed for this uh, uh, type of battle rail so this is where this one is going to go and these backing pieces need to go in the back and you can see how uh, I'm going to hold it in place and uh, get the screws uh, in it. Now if this was on the rifle it would be extremely difficult to try and do. So my first step is these two screws. I'm going to use some blue thread locker and I'm going to put that on the threads you don't need uh, you don't need to soak these uh, bolts with thread locker um, you can see maybe you can see uh, you put a little dip uh, a little dab on there and it kind of runs through all the different threads Okay, you can't see what I'm doing because I'm doing it off camera because I don't want to spill it on my nice white little work surface here. Nothing like a bunch of blue stains on it. Um, the backing plates, these backing plates, um, although uh, you may not be able to see this. Let's see if I can capture this on the camera. The backing plate does have a little bit of a curvature to it. And the curvature, the installation instructions are not specific about the curvature versus the flat end. And I'm just kind of taking a look at the inside of the battle rail. And my guess, um, based on the internal texturing there and the ribbing on the inside, is we would use the flat section to go uh, against against that. So I've got a, a two-inch rail section in place. and um, I've got it in place I've got one finger inside of the rail holding that backing plate and I'm kind of moving it around making sure that I get the uh, backing plate uh, lined up with uh, the hole of the two inch rail and once I believe I have it lined up we'll put one of our screws 
that has Loctite on it. And you don't need to tighten these down. You don't need to tighten them down with Gorilla Force. Uh, you do want them snug uh, when the Loctite is, is uh, dry. It is uh, not going to let the screw back out on you or the bolt. And if you don't get the threads, make sure you, when you get the threads started, you don't cross thread your bolts. And I believe, oh. it should start real easy. I can't really see what I'm doing so I'm trying to do it on camera so I'll go ahead and take this off camera just for a second and uh, take a look down the inside If you if you have a small torque wrench you can definitely feel free to do that I don't know the torque the recommended torque specifications for this um, I don't put a lot of uh, uh, I don't tighten these down with extreme force I make them snug and that's basically it so um, you can you can see how problematic this could be if it was actually installed on a rifle and trying to get that backing plate. Yeah, and that's what it looks like with the uh, the backing plate. So there's my uh, first uh, two inch rail section installed. Okay, moving on to the uh, bottom rail section for my Bravo Company vertical grip. I want my vertical grip um, just a, a, a little bit behind uh, the, my flashlight. So I'm going to I'm going to put it. Uh, hmm. I'm going to put it around at one in one of these spots right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to play around with this off camera a little bit first and make sure I've got the right spot. I'm either going to put it here or here. Okay, after a bit of experimentation, it looks like I'm going to put the uh, second rail for the vertical grip right about here, which is a little further back than where I initially thought I would put it. Um, I definitely recommend when picking your rail locations that you have all of the components you're going to be installing, uh, whether they're lights, lasers, vertical grips, and so on. If you have all those components and you can install the rails and then install the components and kind of do a test fitting of the components. If I would have installed this rail further forward um, and then put it on my rifle and then bought my parts and installed them I would have discovered that my flashlight uh, the tail part of the flashlight comes down to about here so uh, my vertical grip would have been too far forward so that's something to keep in mind that uh, it's a it's a good idea to have all your components handy while you're test fitting your your rail sections to make sure you've got them just in the right place so um, now this installing this particular rail this far down is going to be a little bit more tricky 
because if you're going to stick your fingers in there or your hands, um, you may not be able to get them all the way down. So in those types of situations where you've got to try and, and hold this uh, inside and you can't get your fingers in there, I recommend using a, if you have a needle nose pliers or a hemostat, um, that would come in real handy for, for helping with this. So I have, um, I have both. I have needle nose pliers and a hemostat and I'm going to grab uh, one or both of them for this next step because there's just no way I can get my fingers down in there. Okay, so for those of you who may not be up to speed on what a hemostat is, he this is a hemostat. This one has a curved end on it and it, it is lockable. This is a surgical tool um, that you can grab uh, grab something in and then kind of lock it in place and then you can hold on to it. It's uh, designed for kind of clamping arteries and such uh, uh, in surgery but uh, in the workshop hemostats uh, do have their place as well. So uh, we'll see if I can make this work. Basically what I'm doing is I'm attaching the hemostat to one end of this and hopefully I can insert the hemostat um, far enough uh, down into the rail so I can get the far bolt started and with the far bolt and started uh, far bolt started I can probably let go of this and uh, snug up that that uh, the far bolt and hopefully um, it'll be aligned correctly so now I've got that on the hemostat and I've got two more of the bolts which need uh, a bit of thread locker which I'm doing off camera so I don't make a mess on my work surface And you probably should have some paper towels on hand because uh, I'm slopping thread locker all over my fingers and, and uh, all over the floor here. Okay, so see if this experiment will work. And uh, it's not this this particular hemostat is not quite long enough. So this is all I have right here. Um, I'm going to have to resort to a needle nose pliers. Okay, I have a needle nose pliers, and it is not quite as efficient as the hemostat. Uh, it's hard to, to get the, uh, the grip on this without it moving around too much. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to place this in my lap, kind of hang this down inside and get one of the screws started. So unfortunately I just won't be able to show this on camera because I'm, I'm in an uncomfortable work position here so you can uh, see what, uh, what's going on here and it doesn't it's not really going to work for me so that's kind of what I'm going to do and uh, we'll see if it uh, works out okay without um, a hemostat that was long enough and a somewhat questionable needle nose pliers it technically wasn't really long enough either um, I had to get kind of creative so what I did was uh, I got a piece of uh, a foam material and I cut it so it fit tightly um, into the rail and then I took my rail section as you can see right there I put a screw on one end uh, and got it placed right where I want it and now the pressure from the foam is kind of holding this in place and the screw allows me to kind of move it around a little bit so I can move it forward or back or whatever so 
The next step is to take the rail section with the bolt and I'm going to put it on this way just to get it started, hopefully. And I don't quite have the threads lined up. And take it back to my lap again. Sorry, I gotta take this off camera. I've gotta kinda put it in my lap and uh, make sure I get the uh, backing plate lined up with uh, the rail. And it's definitely a lot easier to do in the lap. So with it sitting in my lap like this, uh, I, I got it started this way, made sure I had the threads lined up, kind of moved it around like this. And once I got the thread started here, this is one of my extra screws with no thread locker on it, I can remove that and swing that into place and take a, a bolt with thread locker already in, already on it and there we go I'm just taking it off camera to make sure it's plenty tight Okay, with that rail section done, I can just pull this foam out and we're good to go. So because of my choice of placement uh, for my vertical uh, grip is so far down, uh, that created a problem with uh, um, how to hold the backing plate on. So a uh, little ingenuity came in real handy here. I guess that's why I'm an engineer. Um, so now that that's installed, I'm gonna test fit uh, my components to make sure that these rail placements are exactly where I want them. Okay, I've got my Inforce um, light installed and the small Bravo Company vertical grip installed, kind of tested, uh, you know, where I want it. I want a little space right here. Uh, this is perfect. So I won't have to uh, take this, uh, take the rail off and, and play around with it. Now, and of course, you know, the, the, the two inch rail section is large enough. I can move, for example, I can move the flashlight a little this way or a little that way if I decide later on that I need a little bit more space, maybe I say I need some more space because I'm wearing thick gloves, I can move it forward a little bit. So it's definitely easy enough. Matter of fact, I can go, I can go that far forward. So I can actually go uh, a lot further forward um, uh, with the flashlight. So definitely a little bit of flexibility with the two inch rail there um, and the uh, Inforce flashlight. So now that I'm happy with uh, the positions of my rails, it's time for us to uh, get these uh, three bolts in the rear uh, started and install the, the battle rail onto the upper receiver. Okay, next up, um, we're going to be installing uh, these nuts. And these are installed uh, one way, and that is shown uh, on the installation instructions uh, on this very last image here you can see the orientation of um, the nut in comparison to the rail on the inside of the rail just past that hole there is a slot for there is a slot for this edge right here so it would be installed 
going like so. And when you're installing these, you can hold it in place with your finger and you can get the bolt started. So uh, you don't want to tighten it down all the way. You want to put maybe a couple of turns on it. It's still going to be really loose, but you want a couple of turns on it so the nut doesn't fall off the bolt. So I'm going to get started with the bolts and the Loctite. And you can see the uh, orientation again. And I'm going to get it positioned. I can feel that the lip on that bolt is in the channel inside of the rail. Wiggle it around a little bit. And I'm just I'm just putting a couple of turns on it right now to get it started. You can see it's still really loose. And we're going to repeat that procedure. Bolt lock tight. Clamping piece. That's probably two turns or turn and a half. And one thing I should note is whenever you're installing any of these screws into whether it's a backing plate or, or any of these uh, tabs, uh, if it doesn't go on the first time, don't force it. Um, these bolts go into these pieces very smoothly. So if it doesn't easily screw in, that means you're cross-threading it, so don't force it back it out, reposition your backing plate or your tab, and try the bolt again. So be very careful doing that. And once we have those in place, that's more or less what it's going to look like. Now we're ready to actually install this on the upper. And you'll notice that uh, right here is an alignment tab. And uh, when we go to install this, not sure I can show this whole procedure here, um, we're going to be installing this at an angle. make sure we get it past our gas block and of course I'm trying to be real careful I don't want to uh, I don't want to gouge up the uh, barrel or the uh, vortex and I'll slide it down now the tricky part is we've got to get it okay we've got to get it over the barrel nut and you can see we've got it over the barrel nut and this tab and the railing is off of course so now we kinda need to we need to wiggle it in place and if these are too tight it isn't gonna go and you may need to uh, I had to put it in my lap get a little leverage on it push it down uh, you'll notice right there it's not straight yet, but once the upper railing meets the upper receiver, you rotate it into place. Now at this point, what you could do, if you had something like a, um, a red dot sight, you could clamp your red dot sight down to hold these two pieces together so you have perfect alignment as you torque these bolts down. 
So what I'm going to have to do I'm going to try and do this on camera. I'm going to I'm going to kind of hold these two pieces in place. And I'm going to start to tighten these bolts down. You don't want to tighten down one all the way. Um, you want to tighten down one a little bit, tighten down another one a little bit, and tighten down the third one a little bit. Uh, get them snugged up, and then repeat the process. So basically I'm using my hands, uh, my fingers, to make sure that uh, those two railing sections are matched up. half turn or so on each one, checking the alignment of the rail. It's still perfectly aligned. Another half turn. Another half turn. And again, these don't need to be torqued down super tight. You're going to want them very snug. I don't know the torque uh, settings on this, on these. But you don't need a uh, gorilla strength tightening these things down. starting to get pretty tight now. I think I'm done with that one. And I'm done with that one. And I'm done with that one. So, uh, still perfectly aligned. And the whole thing pretty much in frame okay so um, not too overly complicated um, the most difficult part was um, this uh, vertical grip rail which you saw me kind of struggle with and I had to get uh, innovative with a piece of foam to kind of hold that backing plate where it needed to be other than that everything uh, went out just went just fine uh, the fit, the finish, um, everything is perfect. So um, um, after you install these bolts back here and you torque them down, you may have a little bit of uh, thread locker uh, up around the edges. So you can go in with a paper towel or um, uh, an old toothbrush and kind of clean that up a little bit. So at this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, my accessories on it, and we'll just uh, uh, check that out, and we'll be done. Okay, um, here's the uh, um, upper with the uh, the Inforce flashlight installed and the Bravo Company stubby uh, vertical grip. Uh, I checked uh, fitment again. Um, of course it's not mounted to the lower receiver but uh, everything is where I want it and I'm pretty much done so this is going to conclude the installation of the Troy Industries 13 inch alpha battle rail and
and I'm happy. So uh, great product, uh, fairly easy installation, and I'm going to definitely enjoy this uh, on my rifle.